And as Smallsy said, I've had a pretty diverse sort of background over the last uh, 15 years or so of my career. Um, and I've been sort of tasked to kind of, with a very, very daunting task really of, of trying to set the scene for the whole day for this, for this Summit Series event. And there's so many um, fantastic presenters today that I'm only going to take 10 minutes. I'm not going to take up too much time. Uh, and when reflecting on this, you know, uh, I was thinking I was talking to, to Brett White, um, who uh, we started the agency. Um, I started the agency with him 15 years ago. And we were talking about how we kind of faked it to make it back then. You know, we, um, we, I remember this one, one story, and I'm just going to tell a little joke just to kind of ease into the presentation. Um, this one story where we, we somehow managed to uh, convince a couple of interstate clients that we were a legitimate agency and we were working out of a spare bedroom in Camberwell. And, uh, you know, we had to be on these conference calls with, you know, these big above line agencies and these powerful media agencies and these PR businesses, etc. And we'd wait for the client to get on the call and um, we didn't know what to do, right? So these nervous 21 year old kids on a, like a landline, like hanging around it going, what the hell do we say? What do we do? Um, so I used to tell a joke, I used to tell a joke to try and, um, you know, ease into everything. So I'm going to tell my one joke, this is my one joke. Uh, and I promise it's my last joke. Uh, so a guy walks into a library and he says to the librarian, excuse me, can I have some fish and chips? And the librarian says, sir, this is a library. He says, oh, sorry, excuse me, can I have some fish and chips? No, sorry. Not, anyway, as I say, I'm not going to give up my day job. Um, so when reflecting on what I think is going to be, um, what business, how businesses are going to have to innovate for the next 15 years or so, um, it's good to kind of look back over the last century and, and realise that the market forces, the dynamics of market forces have changed really rapidly. You know, we've moved from the, the manufacturing age, uh, which has completely changed the way businesses were designed, uh, to distrib the age of distribution, which uh, helped businesses reorganise themselves around the world and created global brands overnight, to the information age, where there's just so much information at people's fingertips. There's reviews, there's product information, there's marketing, there's advertising everywhere, to where we are today, um, the age of the customer, and where I think we'll be for the next 10 to 15 years. And in the age of the customer, services really dominate the landscape. Uh, in fact, I think in Australia, 80% of the GDP is made up of about services. But the thing to note is that, that the, um, the way services are designed is, is completely changing. You know, quite often now, there's products at, and brands at the very ecosystem, at the very centre of these services. A great example of that is Kindle. You know, Kindle is a, a product that's completely disrupted the, the book um, industry, the publishing industry. Not only is it a, good, it's a great little product, it's a great little reader, it's also a subscription service, it's a library, it's a learning facility, uh, and you know you can a get access to broadcast content, customer service on the fly, et cetera, et cetera. And you know, we find in our, uh, in our jobs every day is we're trying to help businesses design services around their products now. And, and a great example is even just where we are today, the MCG, who's one of our great clients, and, and you know, the best sporting facility and, and best entertainment facility in Australia. Uh, well, and probably in the world, right? But um, it's, it is a product and it sells a great product in, in football or cricket or, or a, um, a concert or whatever. But uh, we're also then helping design services around that. So how do you make that experience for the fan much better? How do you give them the opportunity to order drinks directly to their seats or plan their way to the ground or plan their way home in a much, more, a much uh, nicer way? And with all this choice, you know, with all this, this choice we've got between brands and products and, and it's everywhere and, and they're, they're popping up overnight, I think as marketers we used to really differentiate between products uh, and, and brands on the four Ps. You know, the, remember the four Ps? Uh, there was, uh, you know, you, you differentiate a product by the product uh, features or by pricing or proximity, uh, you know, how close they were or even like the brand, the promotion. We used to convince ourselves that promotion was a way of, of differentiating ourselves. But that doesn't, that, you know, that doesn't matter anymore. What, what customers are now choosing, they're cho choosing one brand over another based on the experience they have with that brand. And its experience is becoming so important that, uh, you know, Gart according to Gartner, 90% of companies believe that the most important thing, the most important basis of customer choice will be around the experience. It's why, why the terminology experience design is, is becoming um, quite proliferate in, in our um, industry. Because, um, you know, we are in the experience economy now and the experience economy requires businesses to design their, design their business around customer experience. And there's, you know, there's some 
awesome examples of businesses that have done that. Uh, and you know they've disrupted industries in the process. And yes, I mean these are the poster boys of startups that everybody's going to talk about. Um, you've probably been at at presentations where everyone puts up the Uber slide. Uh, but you know the you know the fascinating thing about this is obviously that Uber owns no cars, Facebook owns no content, Airbnb owns no property. But they're billion-dollar businesses, and they've sprung up globally nearly overnight. Really, when you think about it. And I always find it fascinating, the Airbnb story. You know, this, this is a business that uh, seven years ago couldn't scrape uh, ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 together to keep going. And uh, just recently um, raised, raised a round at a market valuation of about $20 billion. That's $20 billion you know, for, for a business that's essentially a website. Right? And sure, it's a, it's a great website. It's a great user experience. It's a pretty good brand, albeit it's a bit of a sort of sus logo, new logo. Um, but it's, it's, um, you know, it's $20 billion for a website. And if you compare that to um, the Hyatt Hotels, for example. Hyatt Hotels has uh, been around for 50 years, got a lot of brand equity. Uh, it's got 587 bricks and mortar businesses in some of the best locations, in some of the best cities in the world. And its valuation is a paltry $8.9 billion compared to Airbnb. And these startups, you know, this, um, this age of the customer, this experience economy is creating market value so quickly that the race to the billion dollar business is, is becoming quicker than ever before. Even quicker than that slide. But, um, uh, so, you know, previously in the past, you'd, you know, Fortune 500 companies, a typical business, took about 20 to 30 years to reach a market valuation of a billion dollars. When you compare that to the virtual reality device, the Oculus Rift, it went from Kickstarter project to a billion dollar business in around 18 months. So no wonder startups are sexy. No wonder people talk about them. They put them in presentation slides all the time. They talk about disruption, be disrupted, or disrupt yourself or be disrupted. It's because it's a great way to create value already in your business. Um, put your hand up if you've heard the term move at the speed of a startup or evolve at the speed of a startup. Anyone? Yeah, yeah. I reckon it's friggin' annoying, I reckon. So annoying. Because, like, it's basically impossible. It's impossible to do that, especially when you're in an incumbent business, like what we all basically are. You know, and, you know, startups don't have legacy business models. They don't have ego driven organizational structures. You know, they don't have, um, you know, antiquated technology systems that are either too hard, too expensive, or too slow to move. So moving at the speed of a startup is basically impossible. But, but what we do have, and what businesses do have, is they have people. And they have, uh, they have people, they have experience, they have brand equity, and they have customers. And uh, that's pretty powerful. So surely brands are in with a fighting chance. Surely we can turn our business around and make sure that we disrupt ourselves before we're disrupted by somebody else. That we don't become the next Kodak or next Blockbuster video. Um, but in Australia, I think like we're pretty good. Like we're pretty good at adapting. You know, we're we're pretty quick to do that. We're pretty quick to look at the trends that are happening and, and making sure that we're trying to protect ourselves against disruption. Um, but it's adaption. It's not really innovation. It's not really um, true innovation and, and true evolution. You know, we tend to create customer experience units. We hire ahead of innovation. We build a lab and we just pack it full of cool tech and play with it and say we're innovative. Um, or we hire like really smart agencies like IDEO or ISABAR um, to help us redesign our business around the customer experience. But when you compare our rate of investment and in R&D compared to the rest of the developed economies, we rank about 21st out of about 26, 27. That's according to PwC's latest report. And that's pretty scary. And that doesn't really make sense, you know, because there's so many examples out there of brands, of great big uh, global brands and local brands that have invested in innovation and have a willingness to redesign their business around the customer. And when you do that, you win. Uh, not by 63%, but by uh, over 200%. Um, so you know, these, are, these are brand examples that have a you know, huge amount of respect and brand equity and outperform the market two to one. They've taken some long-term bets. You know, they've, they've, they've invested in the right things uh, and they've really turned their businesses around. And investing in the right things is super, super difficult. Right? There's, um, technology is evolving at a rapid pace. It's becoming really accessible, not just to companies, but to people. And that's creating disruption. And I think as businesses, we're 
so guilty of, of, of chasing after the next shiny thing. We're going after, you know, I don't know how many times I've heard we need a mobile app because the CEO wants a mobile app. Or we've got to do something with beacons because the other company's doing something with beacons and if we don't, we're going to be passed by. But when you, when you think about emerging technology and you think about the last 20 years or so, or 15 years or so, the internet's only really been around for about that long. Uh, and it's gone through early hysteria. It's gone through a couple of um, market um, rectific rectifications. And it's, uh, and it's now emerged to be probably this mo the most influential medium ever. So I think we do. I think we're really guilty of, of overestimating the power and the, and the impact of technology in the short term, but underestimating its impact in the long term. So that's pretty much my 10 minutes, I think. And um, just to, to recap, uh, I think yeah, we're in an exciting time. Right? The age of the customer, the experience economy is, is super exciting time to be in business. So much stuff we can do. But I think the three most important things is to design, I mean, it might sound really simple, but it is to design the business around the customer. That's hard to do. That's hard to change the way the business has always operated and to now think about the customer first before you do anything. To disrupt yourself before you're disrupted by the other players in the market that aren't encumbered by legacy systems that you are. But, you know, you, but, you, but understand that you do have the power of people and brand and money and, and, um, and customers. And take some long-term bets uh, with technology. But use technology as an enabler, not as a gimmick. Uh, and that's, that can be important, that can change your business overnight, provide real utility for your customers and build new revenue streams that you've never thought possible before. So the next 15 years, I have no idea what's going to happen. I had no idea what was going to happen over the last 15 years. Um, it's exciting, it's super scary, but I know one thing, it's going to be an awesome ride. Thanks, guys. Who doesn't want to have more fun in their life? And I think advertising is very serious these days. It's it's become much more about ROI and stuff, and I think we, we should be saying, like, how can I make this campaign more fun, or how can I have my, cons my customers have more fun, have a fun experience? The new frontier. What if you could dig into their subconscious and see how they react to certain things? What if you could extract their emotion and see how they respond emotionally to your product? Or